This fork is old. These seals are new. So let's install them in this grip too. Hey folks, we're back again with another video. And today we're gonna to be working on a Fox Factory Series 36 Grip 2 Front Fork. We're gonna be doing a full service to this guy, lowers, air spring, and damper. Lowers, easy enough, every 50 hours or so, you should be doing it. It, it, they, the forks and shocks run so much smoother after a 50 hour service. Air spring, easy enough, not all that hard. In fact, once you get used to doing the air springs, you could do the blowers and the air spring at the same time. Damper, not all too hard. Uh, there are a couple of details that we need to pay attention to, but ultimately I am positive that you can do this job. The video will be broken down in three sections. Lowers, air spring, and damper, as I mentioned before. The lower will be two parts. Part A, in the beginning of the video, will be taking them out, cleaning them, prepping them to be put together, but I'm gonna assemble them at the end after I finish servicing the air spring and the damper, all right? So, with all that being said, let's get into the tools needed for the job. As for tools, we're gonna start off with the tools needed for the 50-hour service. So, for starters, you're gonna to wanna to write down the settings on your fork at a minimum for the 50 hours, you're gonna to need to write down the PSI, right? But high speed, in this case, for this fork, high speed compression, low speed compression, high speed rebound, low speed rebound, all right? So pen and a paper. You're gonna need a shock pump in order to measure your PSI before opening this thing up. From there, we're gonna need a two millimeter Allen to take out the bolt from the rebound knob at the bottom. Then we're gonna need a 10 millimeter and a 15 millimeter socket. Uh, plus ratchet in order to remove the two bolts that hold the bottom boot to the top part of the fork, right? These two Fox tools uh, are used to separate the inner axles from the lower legs. You can buy them from Fox, very expensive, or you could get them aftermarket on eBay for a lot less and they work just as great. Or you could use a coupler. I just don't remember the thread count. Mm, I'm gonna have to get that and maybe put it in the description, but you can use a coupler where you could put like a coupler with a bolt on one side and then screw the other side and just tap it out. Or you could just do it without that, but you take a chance of doing some damage to the threads. A mallet in order to be able to use with those two tools. From there, a pick to take out the foam ring. Then we need some kind of leverage in order to take out the dust wiper. Uh, after that, we wanna put in a new dust wiper. This definitely makes it a lot easier. There's many different versions of these. 36 millimeters is what I'm gonna need for this fork, right? It helps you just insert the dust wiper accurately. A torque wrench to close it all up, all right? Then, we oh yeah, uh, some kind of uh, dowel in order to clean the inside of the lower boots, right? As far as cleaning goes, you're gonna need alcohol, you're gonna need paper towels. We're gonna need SRAM butter or some kind of uh, slick oleum or uh, slick honey, whatever you like, in order to grease the uh, wipers, the new wipers. We are going to need 20 weight oil, okay, for the legs. And for this one, we're gonna need five weight oil for the damper side legs, okay? And that's pretty much it for the damper tools. Let's go into the air spring tools next. One detail I forgot to mention on the 50 hour service, you're gonna need some kind of oil pan in order to be able to put the oil in when you open up the lowers from the uppers, all right? So an oil pan for the 50 hour. Now, as for the air spring, you need all the tools that you saw in the 50 hour service. And from there, we're gonna start off with a 32 millimeter socket, chamfered, flat head, not beveled. The beveled, you take a real big chance on stripping the nut on the top of the air spring, all right? So flat head, you can make your own or just go buy them, but a 32 millimeter is gonna be needed. From there, we, we are going to need a pick in order to take out a retaining clip. Then we're gonna take out the air spring. We're gonna need heat in order to loosen up the Loctite that is holding the base bolt. And we are going to need a 12 millimeter to unlock or to unthread to loosen the base bolt and remove it. And when we put the base bolt back on at the end, we're gonna need a 12 millimeter crow foot with a Torx wrench in order to torque it down to the appropriate specs, right? As for taking out the piston, we're gonna need some picks in order to replace the seals on the actual piston head there. We are going to need, you don't need this, but eh, eh, you take a chance. There's a U-cup and U-cups have sharp edges and it's a tight fit usually from the, the inside of that piston head to go back onto its axle. This is a little bullet tool that helps you put it on there with ease. All right, so this little bullet tool, again, you can buy them aftermarket, uh, much cheaper than buying them straight from Fox, all right? 
We're gonna need some Loctite Red in order to thread down, lock down the base nut again. Sram butter, sacolium, any kind of grease that you like for corks will help. We will need a vise. So you will need vise clamps, okay, in order to hold the, um, the, the, the air spring, okay? Um, as for the shock kit, I mean the, the seal kit, 8030122226 for this particular shock. We're gonna need alcohol to clean everything and we are going to need paper towels. Next up, let's go over the tools needed for the damper. Before I get into the damper tools, I completely forgot to mention that the most important tool, safety glasses. Wear safety glasses, especially with shocks, forks, droppers, anything with pressure, you should wear them all the time, but anything with pressure, you definitely wanna wear safety glasses just in case, all right? So, as for tools, we need the tools from the 50 hour service that we went over before in order to separate the lowers, right? From there, we're gonna to need to work on the damper a two millimeter Allen in order so we can remove the screw where the dial cap is. We're gonna need a 28 millimeter chamferless socket in order to remove the damper. So on the spring side, it was a 32. On the damper side to remove it, it's a 28 flat chamferless. Remember flat chamferless, right? We're gonna need a pick. Well, actually we're gonna need picks to take out seals, but we're gonna to have to take a little, little clip at the top over there where the dial is. Then we're gonna need a three millimeter Allen in order to remove a piston bolt. We're gonna need a 1.5 millimeter Allen in order to remove a high-speed compression loader, right? And a magnet will come in handy in order to keep things together. We're gonna to need, from there, we're gonna separate the top half of the, of, of the tube from the bottom shaft, right? A vise is gonna come in very handy for that. So for the vise, one with a flat edge and one with a 20, a 22 and a half millimeter hole and a 10 millimeter hole is what's gonna be needed to work on the bottom, right? The rebound side or the shaft side. So we're gonna need a 20 millimeter wrench in order to separate it and a 20 millimeter crow foot in order to torque it back to spec, right? From there, we're gonna need heat because we're gonna need 12 millimeter in order to take out a base bolt. So, uh, and a 12 millimeter crow foot in order to torque it back down when we're done at the end. We are going to need both red and blue Loctite, right? Just a little bit of blue, a little bit of each actually. We are going to need shrimp butter. We're gonna need alcohol. We're gonna need lint-free, well, towels. We are going to need a torque wrench to torque everything back down to spec. Very important on a damper. Oil, five weight, PTFE infuses what Fox recommends. Eh, I mean, I don't know if it makes a difference, guys. Five weight oil will work just as good. Um, I don't know if you have this or not. If you don't, go buy it. If you have regular five weight already, you could probably use that. You could use that and nothing's gonna go wrong, right? I don't know how sold I am on PTFE infused oils anyway. So, uh, seal kits. Now this is a little bit tricky. Actually, Fox gave me the wrong information. I had a feeling it was 8030131316, and they were like, no, it's 8030149. Well, then I called back after realizing that, no, this isn't it, and they were like, yeah, you were right, it's 8030131316. So, why the two kits? There's two versions. You have a base version and a VVC version, a volume VVC, I for, I for crying a lot, I can't remember. I'm gonna remember when I'm done with the job. Um, oh, that's gonna bug me now. Volume control. Anyway, variable volume control, something like that. So anyway, variable valve control, that's it. So ultimately, um, one kit, 8030131316 is for non-VVC, 8030194 is for a VVC version, okay? And I'm pretty sure that this isn't a VVC, this one. So that's pretty much it for the tools. Curiosity got the better of me and I decided to open up both kits to see exactly what the differences are, right? Top kit, 8030131316, non-VVC. Bottom kit, 8030194, VVC. These two seals is the only difference. Everything looks, everything else is identical. All right, so for anybody that was curious, there you go. Before we actually start taking apart the fork, we wanna make sure that the fork is clean. There is no loose dirt. Make sure there's no loose dirt inside the steer tube remove all loose dirt from the back of the arch over here as well as from the bottom, all right? Because we do not want loose dirt falling into the lower boots after we freshen it all up. It's gonna wreak havoc inside. It's not a good thing. So one little detail, just make sure you pay attention to it, all right? 
So first we're going to start off by removing the air. And to do that, we have to remove the air cap. Let's take a measurement as far as where we are at. And that is telling me, well, a lot, a lot, a lot of reflection. This is at 70, 80, 80 PSI. So I'm going to write that down. Actually, you know what? I'm just going to empty out slowly over here. Before I forget, 80 PSI. Slowly take out the air. Let's do it one more time. Atomed out and done. Now let's click our high speed and low speed compression counterclockwise. Count the clicks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight high speed, uh, low speed, uh, high speed. Three, four, eight and four. Eight high speed, four low speed. Now for the rebound, in this case, unscrew the cap. And we are going to turn it counterclockwise to the fully open position, count the clicks. First start off with the lower, the slow. Eleven. Seven and eleven. Cool. Put all this stuff on the side. Now we grab our two millimeter and we loosen the bolt on the rebound. Counterclockwise. Boom, one down and the other one out. All right. Ooh, why did that pop out like that? Not an issue. Boy, that guy's in there real good. Holy cow. Now take these guys and put them on the side with your air cap. Next is removing the bottom bolts. Start off with the air side, 10 millimeter socket, loosen it. And you should be able to remove the rest by hand. And then for the damper side, 15 millimeter socket, loosen it, small crack, loosen. And we should be able to remove it by hand. All right. So here's one of them. And here is the other one. Put these on the side. Do not lose them. Now, sometimes a crush washer will get stuck down here. If it's stuck, remove it. In this case, it is stuck in here. So, you know what, I'm gonna leave it in there. I'm gonna remove it later when we put new seals and finish it all up, okay? So now, we take these little tools. The whole idea is to detach these axles from the lower boot, right? So we don't screw these in all the way. Screw them about halfway for starters. So we get enough threads caught, each one. Okay, then we take our hammer and give it a tap. One, two. Now, yep, this one's definitely out. And this one's definitely out. We unscrew them. Now you need an oil basin because oil's gonna come out. All right. One. And that is two. fork and oil thing and pop it out and that's oil all right now we take them and separate them okay let it sit here for a few minutes uh, so it could drain out completely and then we will get back and start cleaning up the inside of the lower boots. So we separated everything. Before we work on the lower boot, cleaning the inside, 
Um, the damper side fills up with oil. So while we're waiting uh, to work on the lower boot, a lot of oil will want to come out if you don't have it facing upwards. So what you can do is just put a piece of paper towel just to collect the oil so it doesn't spill all over the place unexpectedly. All right, a little tip on that one. Next, uh, let's start cleaning the inside of the lower boot. So we got most of the oil out of there. If you hear a rattling, don't freak out. That's just this guy here, okay? We're gonna start off by removing the foam ring. Boom, eh, not too bad, I've seen worse, all right? So, actually these aren't too bad at all. Foam rings, these go in the garbage because we are going to replace them. Next, we're gonna take out the wipers. And to take out the wipers, I like using this uh, Ice Tools tire uh, lever. It has a nice rubber coating and it really helps without to avoid chipping the paint off the lowers. Uh, a wrench could actually chip it pretty bad if you're not careful, all right? So let's go here. This is on a table, so it's always hard for me up here, guys. I might have to put this on the floor. Let me see if I can take it out. One, two, three, go. Oop, there goes one. And I don't get enough leverage. And then one, two, three. And there goes the other one. Yay. Garbage. All right. Now let's get in there and start cleaning. I have my little method for cleaning forks. Some people might think it's excessive, but you know what? I don't care. These things are a lot of money. I like making sure they're totally clean outside and totally serviced, right? So what I do is first, take, pick one side, plug the hole in the bottom, fill it up with a good amount of alcohol, and then shake it around to break all the old oil up. All right, we want to break the old oil up, and there's some pretty old oil in here to say the least. So I want to make sure it's broken up real well. Let it all out. And we're going to do that one more time. Except this time, we're going to let it out this side out any debris and bring it out this way because what we are going to do is clean the top. All right. Okay. Now what I do is grab lint-free paper towels, take a towel, put it around a dowel, okay, basically create like a mop. Give me a couple of nice edges, soak a mop up, spray it down with alcohol again. And go in there, clockwise first, and then counterclockwise. And the whole idea is to mop up everything we can. Let it sit at the bottom for a little bit so it can soak up from the bottom. All right. If this one's done. I do it again, two times each side. Give some room at the bottom. Turn them open a little bit, Turn like a mop. Spray them down. in here. Let them soak everything out of the bottom. Okay. And basically from here, we take them, we let them dry a little bit, put them up to the light and see if we can 
see anything wrong with the bushing on the inside. Any scratches, any scuffing, this guy is looking great. And that's pretty much the process. And I will repeat it for the other side. I won't record the other side, but ultimately you should get it, right? Let me finish the other leg and I will be back. Okay, so our lower is totally clean. We looked inside, the bushings are looking good. No issues there. Next, we would put everything in for the 50 hour service, but I'm gonna go into that later. What we will do in order to prep to close everything up is take our foam rings out of our new um, seal kit foam ring kit, part number 803-00933. I'm not sure if I mentioned that in the beginning of the video, but nonetheless, I just mentioned it, so we're good. Then we're gonna take our 20 weight oil. We're gonna cover them. It's a brand new one. Ready? It's amazing how these things add up throughout a year. And we're gonna cover them. A little bit extra, we will be using it. Close this thing up before you spill them. That is from experience. Tap this guy down, let him soak up. And then we're just gonna let him sit there. All right. We will get back to him and installing the wipers and finishing this up after we're done with the air spring and the damper. Next up. Let's open up the air spring. First thing we need to do is take off the top cap. And for that, we are going to need a 32 millimeter flat chamferless socket. Now, somebody had mentioned in the comment that it's a lot easier taking this thing off when it's on a, let's say a bike stand. Uh, agreed, but I mean, I'm just trying to do everything on the table so it could be clearer for everybody over here, even though it is a pain in the butt trying to take this off, right? Or it can be depending on how torqued down it was by the last person who torqued it. I wish they had a better system for this, but so we go counterclockwise. First crack is going to be the hardest. Make my life easier here. Just want to slide around. All right, just try and get some leverage and push down. There we go. And we are out. I think that thing's down like 28 newton meters, so it's a good amount of pressure. Do the rest by hand. Yes, I can. And our cap with one little token in there. Perfect. Set this guy, we'll put him on the side. All right. Next up, again, that's oil coming out from this guy on the inside, so just be careful with that. I put some towel back in them so you could absorb some of the oil. Next, we have a retaining ring here at the bottom, okay? Uh, there's a lifted side and a flat side. What we want to do is take the lifted side, the pick, and just lift it up and out. Just like that, all the way around. Done. And he's out. And now, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, that's where this tool is going to come in handy because. Oh, there you go. Sweet. That was unexpected. A lot easier than I thought it was going to be. One less thing. And there is our air spring. All right. First, let's clean off all the grease from this guy. So we don't make a bigger mess. What a stink. It's amazing how bad these could smell sometimes. This one right now smells like a rotten fish. Okay, just clean that. Top part. That's why we don't get this stuff all over us. Okay, now, before, I get into cleaning the air spring and taking it apart. Let's clean out the inside of the tube, which is easy enough. Let's go here, spray them down. And the towel, punch them up into a ball. 
nice tight ball. Dowel and slowly through. And we look inside and he is, well, I don't know if you can see that, but trust me, he's spotless inside. Let's clean the threads well. Make sure there's no dirt on them. All right. Cool. Yep, he's spotless inside. Now we take apart the air spring. For the air spring, before we get started, I had taken all the seals out of part number 8030126. That's the next generation air spring seal kit. Put them in order over here based on size, all right? So the goal over here is take out this base nut, remove this piston, replace the seals on the inside, the outside, and we'll take care of all of it, right? Now, uh, you will need a vise. You don't need a vise, guys. Technically, if you're really careful, you can separate this. You will need heat, most likely. Uh, but you take a chance because they don't give you anywhere else to hold on to, right? So a vise with soft jaws, 10 millimeter hole is absolutely recommended here, right? So the first thing we want to do is just clean the shaft and make sure it's free of any grease. So it goes in the vise and has a nice grip. Now, before we apply heat, there's a seal over here and we need to remove this seal. Just be careful with it. These little seals sometimes are the trickiest. All right, so I'm going to put it on the side for now. Now we're going to take this guy, we're going to put him in the vise. Okay. Make sure we got our 12 millimeter. Yes, we do. You could test him to see if you even need to. Yeah, he's stuck on there. This is where we grab our heat. All right. Put a little heat on them, about five seconds. And then, take them down, there you go. And done. All right. Take this guy out of here. Hmm. There we go, and we have another seal on the inside here. Okay, now another thing we're gonna do is clean out the threads on both sides. First, let's take out this seal. Be careful, you don't stab yourself, like I have many times. Too many times. Put him on the side. That's the bottom seal, or the inside seal, this is the outside seal, right? So, outside, inside. Let me go get some brushes and we will clean the inside of the, the threads. First, I'm going to start off with cleaning the threads on this guy here since he's easier. Any kind of wire brush will take care of all that Loctite. Huh. Clean. Now, get this guy out of here for now. Let's remove our piston for now. So we're gonna get in the way, put them on the side. I'm gonna take a brush that is big enough to go in there and basically remove any Loctite that's stuck in the threads. Oh. There you go. Cool. So, let's put him back in here. For now, just to hold him somewhere. Now let's start replacing seals. First, we're gonna start with the seals on this base nut. We got these two guys over here, so we're gonna take them, bring them on this side and try and match them. That is definitely the new one. And this one is right underneath it. Yep. Okay. I'm going to take a little bit of grease, put them on each seal. So we said the fatter seal, the smaller fatter seal goes on the part with the finer threads. Okay. Stuck to me for crying out loud. Okay. 
So let's put him in. Be careful we don't damage him. All the way down. And the other one goes on the other side. Hmm. Hmm. There we go. Now clean all grease off the threads. And this guy's done. Now our little piston. Let's clean them of all old grease and oil. Good. Inside and out. First let's start with the inside seals just in case we do damage to the outside seal by mistake. Don't want to do damage by mistake on the outside seal while fixing the inside. So we have two rings, right? One above the other one. They're actually quads, uh, buttercups, actually uh, U-cups. So let's grab our pick. Okay. It's a bit stiff. Stab them and pick them up. Just like, hmm, add them there. Now I have them for good. Come on, I'm trying to show you guys something. There we go. Okay, so as I pull them out, there's an up and a down to these things. There's a flat side that's down and a cup that's up, right? So cup goes downwards. Now let's do the same to the other one. Actually, this guy's a quad seal. Nope, he's a U-cup as well. So we got two U-cups. We have a smaller one and a bigger one. Okay, and then we got a seal on the outside. Let's clean this guy well. Let me get another towel. Great. Obviously, we're going to match them, and it's pretty evident that it's these two guys here. Bottom and top. Old and new. Throw these guys aside. Put some grease on them. All right. Now we put them in. We have the U-cup and a quad ring. The small one is the quad ring. Quad ring goes up and the U-cup goes towards the bottom, all right? So we're gonna start in by putting the U-cup first since it's a little bit bigger. First thing we're gonna do, even though we have grease on the old ring, we're gonna put a little bit of grease on the inside of the seats, all right? Now the U-cup, there's a flat part. Flat part goes inside. The cup part sticks out the bottom, okay? Basically what we're gonna do might be a little bit stiff. We're going to put this guy into a seat. He's going to be really stiff. Put him into a seat all the way around and then just let him pop in. Man frame. Holy cow. Come on. Come on. There we go. And boom. Now make sure that the cup is the cup part is facing bottom. Make sure he's not twisted. Okay, and there we go, all the way around. Perfect. Now we put in our quad ring from this side. Might be a little bit tricky getting him in. He's sort of in the middle. What we want to do is take one side, put him in a seat. All right. All right. Just like that. Hold him and then. Try and pop them in, just like that. Spin around, and we are good. Camera overheated, so let's get back to the job. We were about to change the seal on top. Got to find a new one. This is the new one. We're gonna put some grease on them, and we are going to pop them on there. All right. That takes care of him. Now, let's take this guy out of here. We have a quad ring up here we need to replace. Watch your fingers, watch the plastic. Make sure you don't pierce or scratch the plastic. 
is out. Let's look for his replacement. It's got to be this guy right here. Yes, it is. A whole bunch of grease on the inside of this guy. Some grease inside. That's where we know he stays nice and grease on the inside. We're going to take the quad ring. The whole goal is to make sure he doesn't twist when we put him in, right? Because these guys, they could twist and you will not know it. You have to be very careful with that. You do not want them twisted. They need to be flush or even all the way around. So make sure just like There you go. Done. Okay. Make sure they don't twist on you. That takes care of that one. Let's change the seal on this guy. Take him. This has got to be the replacement right here. Let's clean the threads. All right. A little bit of grease on them, not that much grease. And slip them over this side here. And put them in a seat. And he is prepped. And that is all the seals. Now we put it all back together. To put them back together, first let's clean the shaft. Well, actually we don't need to do that. Well, technically, yeah. Let's clean the shaft with alcohol, with alcohol just to make sure it's clean. So we get good grip in here. All right. Now this is where the bullet tool comes in handy. Again, this is a sharp edge. And if you try and put them in, it's a tight, tight fit. And you take a big, big chance on destroying the quad ring, right? Like literally tearing it. Hence why we have this bullet tool. So what you do is just put a little bit of grease on the bullet tool, just like that. Flat part down, right? This part here, the concave part or the empty part in here faces up and slide them in just like that. Boom, bullet tool did his job. That's all we need them for. Doesn't seem like much, but believe it or not, it's very easy to do damage. Now let's clean the threads of all grease in here because we are gonna have to put Loctite. Okay. Next, we put in our base nut. For the base nut, fine threads go inside. We're gonna put a little bit of Loctite on them. Loctite red. All right. That's actually quite a bit. A little bit too much. Spread them around. All right. And then we're gonna put this guy in. Screw him in by hand. Always by hand first. This guy's tight. Okay. Take a wrench, bring him down to the end. Oops. Don't crank him down. Just make sure he's at the end. Then we grab our torque wrench, 12 millimeter. Crow's foot, 90 degree angle, 5.7 Newton meters. All right, take them, slowly bring them around. Oh, now I'm gonna be in an odd spot. There we go. 5.87, good enough. And that guy is on there. We are ready to put him back into the upper. Time to put the air spring back into the upper tube, right? First thing we're gonna do, we're gonna grab a little bit of grease in our fingers and coat the inside lightly. Okay, as deep as your finger could go. Give it a nice little light coat. All right, then we're gonna take some grease. We're gonna put around the quad ring. Okay, like that. You don't have to go too crazy on it. And we're also going to coat our shaft. All right. OK, 
Okay. We're going to take the whole assembly, bring it all the way up. Okay. And we're going to take it, we're going to roll it in. Watch your fingers at the bottom. And he is in. Now, we're going to put our retaining clip. Again, you have the lifted side, you have the flat side. Put them in flat side first. Okay, take them, put them in flat side first, and then just make sure that he is fully seated in his seat. Just like that. There you go. No negative pressure, everything's pushing down. Okay, let's go to the top now. We're gonna put three cc's of the 20 weight oil in the upper part of the tube. Okay, so we have our O-ring soaking. We have some extra oil in there. Let's suck up three cc's. Three, oh, well, actually, let me suck that out, get the air out, and get all the air out. There we go. And now I can suck in. That's the perfect three cc's. So we're gonna take this guy, and we're just gonna put it in the upper part of the tube, just like that. All right. Then we take our cap, we already greased our o-ring, and we're going to screw him in, always by hand first. Grab our ratchet, tighten him down, bring him as far as you can. Next we torque him. As for torquing him, 24.8 newton meters technically. All right, so them on there and my frame 24.1 good enough he ain't going nowhere all right and that is our air side completely done next up let's take out the damper first thing two millimeter bolt or two millimeter allen and we are going to take out the we already opened everything to the completely open or moved, turned everything to the completely open position. Let's take out this screw on the top cap. All right. Be careful with it, put it on the side. Now we're gonna take off the top cap, but watch out, there should be a little ball, a little bearing that holds this in. And there it is. Be careful you don't lose that bearing. All right, so. Let's put that on the side. Next, we are going to need a 28 millimeter chamferless flat uh, socket in order to take out the damper. Okay. Actually, just put this underneath so it makes less noise while I'm doing this. And once again, this is going to be a bit of a pain, but doable. First crack, it's going to be the hardest. I don't have leverage here. Okay. And we slip the whole damper out. Watch the bottom. And there's our damper. First thing we're gonna do is clean the whole outside of oil. Get rid of all, boy, it stinks, man. Uh, let's clean all the oil from the outside. Okay. Cool. Before we work on the actual damper itself, just like we did for the air spring, we're gonna clean the inside of the tube. To clean inside of the tube, spray them down with alcohol. First, let's clean the threads. That's the top part, make sure we're all good here. Oh, it's pretty dirty. Okay. Not bad. Again, put some alcohol in them, then, 
paper towel. This one doesn't matter if it's lint free. Nothing touches the side of the walls here. Bunch them up and clean all the old oil out. And he is clean. Done. Now let's open up the damper. This might look a little bit odd, but this damper is just a little bit too long for me to be able to put it vertically straight up on the vise. So I have the vise on a bit of an angle, right? The goal here is to take off this top cap. Now we're gonna have, definitely you're gonna have to put the damper in a vise and a soft jaw, 22 and a half millimeter hole, okay? Uh, we'll fit it. So um, make sure that everything is clean of oil so it doesn't slip around, lock it down, right? So then we are going to take a 28 millimeter flat chamferless socket, okay? Flat chamferless, we're gonna put on top and we are going to unscrew counterclockwise, just like that. Okay. Let's keep on unscrewing. Make sure you have a little oil dispenser. Okay, this is gonna be a lot of threads. Should be able to do the rest by hand. There we go. Now we are going to pop it up. Might be a little bit of pop, some suction in there. Let the air get in there. Then the bleed hole and the rest will pop out. And there we go. Done. All right. Now we're gonna take this guy. Slip him out of here. Boy, man, that stinks. Whew. And we are going to dump our oil out. Get all the oil out of it. Fun. All right. Next up, dispose the oil and start working on the head. All right, so this might prove to be the worst part of the job. For some reason, Fox insists on using these little C-clips to hold down the needle, all right? Um, they're a major pain in the butt to get out sometimes. So you need really small tools. So what they give you, you can't even see them really, right? Or see it. So they give you these two holes, one here and one opposing. And the whole idea is to take something, very, a fine pick, a very thin pick, and basically try and go underneath that clip and bring it out, right? The problem is when you let go, it pops out right away. It's really hard to get it to pop out and stay out, right? So then what you do is hold on to when he's popped out, right? Hold on to him. He's popped out there. Yeah, he's definitely popped out now. At least enough for me to get some kind of purchase. You want to find the end, but, and then what you can do is grab like another thin pick or a thin screwdriver real small and thin. Is this in the middle of the frame? Yeah. And then try and get underneath him and pop him out. I'm probably going to need to get another pick. Just watch your fingers here. It's got to be the end. There he goes. Oop, nearly had him. Yep, I got him. I got him. I got him. I got him. There you go. Done. I freaking hate those things. Okay, just watch your fingers. Be careful how you position your hands. Try and position them underneath. So this way, if the pick slips, it won't go into your thumb or into your finger. Be very careful with that. It's a real bad design, personally, in my opinion. They should, they gotta figure out a way around that. So again, 
there's a clip inside. You won't see it well. That's the clip. They give you these two little micro holes. Why they couldn't make the holes double the size, it would make this so much easier. And I guarantee you it wouldn't sacrifice uh, uh, stiffness or uh, strength on the material. So, uh, but anyway, grab a small pick. It's got to be a very thin pick. Put it in a hole and try and lift. See the way the end of the pick is sticking up? Put it in the hole and try and lift up the clip. And then if you're lucky enough, it'll pop out enough right then and there in order to pick it, uh, take it out. If not, you're gonna need another pick in order to find the edge and peel it out just like I just did. All right, so be careful doing this. This is the worst part of this whole job. Uh, well, let's start taking this guy apart. Next, we're gonna take the low speed compression dial and we are gonna turn it counterclockwise until it comes out. If it's a little bit stiff, you could use, let's say, um, if you can't get good grip, you could use, let's say, a needle nose plier. Just make sure to turn it counterclockwise. But it should come out easy enough. There you go. Okay. Now we're going to use this guy, and we're going to unscrew the needle on the inside so we can remove him. There you go. So there's our coupler. Keep everything in order. And there is our needle. Next, we want to remove the piston. So there's two ways to do this. You could grab a 28 millimeter socket with a three millimeter Allen and unscrew the bolt uh, by hand without a vise. But if you do that, there's a big chance that all this is gonna pop out and fall on you. Uh, it's just a lot more stable on a vise with flat jaws basically, right? So we just grab two flat edges and put them into the flat jaws. This is your choice, however you wanna do it. Either way, I'm fairly confident that the shim stack's gonna fall apart on you. But I'll show you guys what it looks like while I'm going through this. So we have a three millimeter Allen for this bolt, right? We just wanna loosen this. Don't take it off all the way, just loosen it. And we're gonna take it off by hand. Now, we have the bolt, we have a check shim, we have our piston, we have our shim stack underneath, okay? Uh, shim stack's probably gonna to wanna to stick to everything. What you wanna do is grab as much of the shim stack as you can underneath and pull it all out as one mechanism, all right? So that's your safest bet. So basically, unscrew the bolt, okay? Until it all loosens, you'll feel it all lift. You're not gonna be able to grab all the shims, I'm sure of it on the grip too. So now it's all loose, right? And I'm gonna grab with my fingernails, everything underneath, take it and flip it over. All right, and there's our shim stack. And I will break out the shim stack. Let's put this here, because I can see already we got two shims here. So we're gonna grab a magnet there's our two shims, right? So be careful, look at them carefully, which one's on top. The top one goes on the bottom, basically. So this one is on the bottom. That should be a one millimeter thick, a 0.1 millimeter thick shim. This one here should be a 0.3 millimeter thick shim. And then, we have, and I'm just showing you the assembly because chances are this is gonna fall apart on you your first time. So then we should have a big shim. That's one, be careful, they stick together really good. We should have two, we should have four of these, three. And then underneath, nope, didn't stick, I got lucky. So that's four big ones, and then we should have two one millimeter shims again, uh, 0.1 millimeter thick shims. Okay, and that's the shim stack assembly. You might have an extra one down here, an extra 0.1. That's all dependent as far as uh, uh, clicking, clickability basically for your low speed compression or high speed compression, I forget. But anyway, then we have our piston, we have our check valve, and in my case, the spring came out. Okay, so that's the order. We have our spring on the bolt, check valve, piston, small, Spacer, spacer shim, spacer shim, 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 three millimeters, 0.3 millimeter shim, one millimeter, 0.1 millimeter spacer, sh spacer shim. All right, so let's leave that there for now. We do have seals that we got to replace. We'll, we're, we will replace everything as we take everything apart, basically, right? Now we want to remove the loader, the high-speed compression loader. So there are two one and a half millimeter bolts, okay? Just got it down here. Not in, they're not in their tights. Just take them, remove one, put it down, and now we remove the other one. Do 
All right. Let's lift up the loader straight up. Okay, seal in there we need to change. Take out the IFP and we are done. We don't need to take out the spring. Next, let's start changing seals. So before we start replacing seals, check your top cap underneath in here. If there's like gunk buildup, you can actually take out the spring, go in there, clean it all up, and then put the spring in. When you put the spring in, just make sure you hear a click, just like that, right? And it's in place. So let's start changing some seals. We'll start with the IFP. Take the IFP, separate it. Okay, there's nothing in here. But there is a seal on the inside and a seal on the outside that we need to take care of. Let's remove the one on the outside first. All right, put them down. And then there's one on the inside near the top over here. Watch your fingers. There you go. Yeah, come on. And that's the one on the inside. That's the only one on the inside. So deceiving here. Yep, that's the only one on the inside. All right. So if you noticed, I had already laid out all my seals over here. So I'm going to take this guy and I'm going to try and match him. This guy's definitely this guy. Wow, that's close. But this one's the same thickness. So this is the new one. And then this guy's got to be this guy here. Okay, I need a little bit of SRAM butter. Okay, SRAM butter on them. And we're gonna start off with the top one. I forgot my flat spatula. Oh, it's right there, good. All right, we're gonna take them, put them in a seat. I love these flat spatulas for this. All right, just like that, put them in a seat and the rest we will force in. Boom. Yeah. And he is in. Done. Can we just pick, take the other one, put it on the outside? Done. Take him. If you notice, he sort of squared off on top. The other side totally round. Put him on the squared side and click him in. Done. Now, our loader, on top here we have a little seal, and there he goes. Find his match, it's got to be that guy there, I bet. Yep. A little bit of grease. Put him in a seat. He should be pretty easy to get in. I bet you I just jinxed myself. Or jinxed myself. I need to learn to talk again. Come on, come in here. Oop, nearly there. Oh, nearly had it. Come on. Now you're going in. Come on. And there we go. He's done. Then we have on the outside of the piston. This guy here. Let's take him out. Find his replacement. That's got to be him right. Nope, that's him right here. Okay. Come on. Mm -hmm. Come on. All right. He is in. We don't have one here, but we do have one here. And these. Mm, I hate these small ones. Ow, already. Mm. 
stab myself 40 times over with these small ones. There we go. Find him. That's got to be him right there. No, that's not him right there. Wow. Yeah, that's got to be him. Uh, this one looks smaller. And the other ones are bigger. That doesn't make sense to me. It's not him. It's not him. It's got to be him. It has to be him. Nope, it's him. It's probably just stretched out. Okay. And we put him... Pain when their hands are greasy. Come on. Take them, put them on one side, and then flip them over. The only thing is with greasy hands, just watch you don't tear them. Come on. There you go. Oh, got them. You know what? Cool. And that's it. All that work just for those seals. Go figure. There's one more seal over here at the base. Let's take him out. Come down. And find his replacement. And that's got to be him right here, right? Yep. That is him. A little bit of grease on him. Take him. Put him back into his seat. Oh, thought I had you. Come on. There we go. And he is in. Next, we're going to put the needle back in. All right. So the threaded part goes up. Take it, drop him in there. Then we're going to take our coupler. We have the new O-ring on there. Put him in. And basically turn the needle all the way in fully. Okay. There you go, till he stops. So it's gonna take a bit, just to give you an idea. Now, you turned him, the needle and the coupler stopped completely. You can't turn them anymore, right? But at that point, we gotta sink the coupler, press him down just like this. He'll wanna pop up. We gotta press him down and put in this retaining clip and we got to sink him in good. Make sure he's fully seated. We'll put this guy in later. Okay, so this is going to be a little bit tricky. You got to get one side in. So sink the one side. In fact, where is this guy here? The only thing is, watch out he doesn't bounce all over you and fly into the whatever room you're in. Come on. So, again, sink him in, put one corner in just like that, see now he's trapped, and then try and squeeze the rest in. It's going to be a little bit tricky, but you'll get him. Again, this is literally the hardest part of the job is dealing with this clip. Oop, nearly there. Oh, had him for a second. There we go. And make sure you sunk in just like that. All right. Cool. That part's done. Now we put it all back together. So let's start off with the IFP. We take him, center him, pop him in, make sure he's sitting nicely over the spring. Okay. Then we take our loader. Make sure the holes align with the holes on the side, okay? The bottom hole on the side. So, take him, grab our four and a half millimeter. Make sure he pops in the hole and then screw him in. Okay, why is he not screwing in? That's odd. 
Why is he not screwing in? Obviously, I'm not sitting right. There he goes. So just jiggle him around. That was weird. Didn't make sense at all. But just jiggle him around, make sure the front part of it goes into the hole, right? And this guy, we are just gonna do finger tight, like literally 0.3 newton meters, something like that. Just finger tight, very lightly tight. And that's it. All right, next we deal with the shim stack. So this is the shim layout, right? And the reason I laid it out is because chances are, if you do this job, they're gonna fall apart on you. Again, it's really easy for the shims to fall apart as you take out the piston, right? So we have three shims over here, three types of shims, or three sized shims. 0.1 millimeter thick, 0.1 millimeter thick. These large ones are all the same size. 0.3 millimeter thick and 0.1 millimeter thick. Okay, so that's the important one. They're all like, these are like eight millimeters by six millimeter internal diameter, eight millimeter external diameter. So you might have an extra 0.1 millimeter down here. That'll be dependent on the shock, right? But ultimately this is the layout. 0 0.1, 0.1, four big ones in a row, 0 0.3 and 0.1. Now this side goes to the bottom. This one touches the piston, all right? So we're gonna take them and put them in one by one. All right, so there's our 1.1. In my case, you might have another 0.1. In my case, I don't I have a 0.3. I'm gonna take the large one, take the other large one, take another large one, take the last large one, and then take the two spacers. These are more spacers than anything, and put them, try and center them best you can. All right, he's sitting in there, sweet. All right, so that is all good. Make sure they're not on your fingers. So then, our piston. One side has one raised ring, the other side has two raised rings. The two raised rings faces up, one way raised ring faces the, the, the shims, right? So we're gonna take our check plate, put on the two raised rings. We're going to take our screw, make sure the spring is on there. We're going to put this in the middle. Okay, prep your three millimeter Allen. We're going to take this guy, plop him on top, screw him in. Now here we want to make sure that the shim is not bound or caught into the spring. Okay, and we are actually good. We are good. And we have to torque him down. As for torquing him down, 1.9 newton meters. Okay, three millimeter, put him in there. Try and get him perfect. 1.9, make sure your check valve spins. We are great. And that takes care of the top half. Let's work on the bottom. Now we remove the shaft. Take the damper body, put in a soft jaw, 22 and a half millimeter hole. Um, make sure that it's clean. Take alcohol to the body, make sure that it's not greasy so it doesn't spin around in the soft jaw, right? Crank it down, 22 millimeter wrench, counterclockwise, and there we go. There's Loctite in here so it'll be stiff. Take them and just thread them out. It's gonna be quite a few threads. A lot of Loctite in there. Too much Loctite in there. All right, oh my God, look at all the Loctite in there. And then take them out. All right, now, whew, man, that stinks. Why does it stink so much? Why does everything stink in this shock? I mean fork. Okay, so let's clean this out first. Take as much of that Loctite residue off. First, let's try and wipe out whatever Loctite we can from the tap. Grab a plastic brush. Oh, the marks are pretty good. Okay. And then... 
little free paper towel, punch it in there. And take a dowel and push it through. And it pretty much did it. Threads are clean on this side. Let's do both sides just in case. Yep, got a little bit here. Cool. This guy is done. Next, we take the shaft. We put in a 10 millimeter hole in a soft jaw. Okay, make sure the shaft is clean before you put it on there, right? Just spray it down with alcohol and wipe it so it doesn't slip around. Then we want to take out this screw. Now behind this screw is a spring and a little bearing ball, basically a detent ball, whatever they want to call it, right? So it's a two millimeter Allen and we need a magnet. So loosen the screw. The screw is not magnetic, but the spring and the ball behind it are, right? So when you pull the screw out, There we go. Come on. There's our little ball magnet, but the screw's not magnetic. But take these three things and put them on the side. Okay? Keep them safe right there. Done. Now let's take off the head. Actually, before we take off the head, there's a, a seal right under here. Let's take out the seal. Put it on the side. And now we take out this bolt. Now I sort of messed up. This is a 13 millimeter, not a 12 millimeter, okay? We will need heat, apply heat at the base over here to warm up the Loctite red that's underneath. Don't go too crazy. There we go, that's more than enough. About five seconds worth of heat. Take this guy and, oh yeah, it's coming loose. Take him out. All right, there we go. Now let's take out our rebound rod, put him on the side. Now let's take out our shaft, remove our piston. There's a seal in there we're gonna have to change. All right, now let's take off the, um, the rebound head over here clean this and put it back into the shaft. Clean it real well and put it back into the shaft. Now we take our 12 millimeter and we unthread the piston. Come on. Come on. Come on. Stop giving me a hard time. There we go. And pull the whole assembly out. Ta-da! There goes that. Now let's clean the threads and this guy completely. For the shaft, grab plastic brush, clean the threads, make sure there's no old Loctite. Make sure there's no old Loctite on them. Okay. Spray them with alcohol, spray them down inside. Grab a little piece of paper towel, tuck them in, spin them in there. The reason we're doing this is just in case some Loctite residue fell inside. And we're gonna push this guy through with a dowel, wooden dowel, perfectly clean inside. And just wipe the outside. Done. All right. Let's start changing seals. First, we're gonna start with replacing the U-cup seal. Okay, there's a seal in here, it's a U-cup. Take a, oops, I had it. It's gonna be a little bit stiff. I just broke it. There we go. And be careful pulling them out. Done. Most other kits, they actually replace the entire thing. So 
Um, let's just go in here, give it a quick clean. All right. Now this is obviously this U cup here. Okay. And um, basically the cup faces down. So it faces like this, right? So this part of the cup faces upwards, just like that. So we're gonna grab a little bit of grease put on the U cup. So remember, it faces upwards. The flat part faces the flat part below. So put him in a seat and try and squeeze him in. Make sure he is not twisted. And he is good. Yep, perfect. So we got this seal that we got to change over here, which is definitely this guy here. And the new one. A little bit of grease on this guy. Put him back on. Hmm. All right, we have our Teflon seal over here. Take him off. Get the new one from the bag. Oh. This guy's always going to be too big. He'll have to squeeze in there when we put him in the, when we finish up the shock, uh, the fork later. Toss this guy out. Now there's another seal on the inside in here. Pop him out. Oop, watch out for, what is that, a shim? Oh yeah, watch out for the shim. So the shims at the bottom, be careful. Come on. There we go. Make sure the shims are seating flat. All right. So put this guy down, find his replacement. That's this guy right here. A little bit of grease on him. This guy might be a little bit tricky. Find his seat, watch the shims on the bottom. There we go, make sure, there he goes. And let's just get this side. All right, Oop, nearly there, there we go. Nope, now he's in. No, he's not, this side's not in, there we go. Now he's in, make sure he's perfectly round in there, perfectly seated. All right, so now let's clean the threads. Cause we're gonna have to put Loctite on them. Okay, so this guy's done. I don't think there was anything else. I think that is it for this whole mechanism, right? Yep. And on this side, there shouldn't be anything either. I don't need to take out the ball. We are good. Let's put it all back together now. Time to assemble. We're gonna take grease. We're gonna put them on the bottom here, fill them up and put a good amount on the edge over here. All right, then we're gonna take this guy, make sure the open area faces upwards. All right, there's gonna be a lot of leftover grease, but that's good, it's okay. We're gonna wipe all that out. Okay, let's get it all out of there from the middle. Okay. A little bit of alcohol on here and clean the threads. All right. Now, we're gonna take, should I use the lint-free towel? Loctite red, put it on the threads, one drop. All right, you don't need a lot. Just like that. Ooh, that's a lot. That's like two drops. That's okay. We'll wipe it off. There we go. All right. 
Now, we're going to take the chef, we're going to put them in. Those in there. Oops. Damn. Why they make that so big, I have no idea. But it's okay. We'll put it in there after. So screw them down by finger first, hand first. Make sure he gets bite by hand. Make sure you can screw them down by hand before you take the wrench to them. All right. There we go. Now we can take the wrench tool. 13 millimeter. I need the 12 millimeter right here in front of me. All right. Let's thread them down. Right to the end. And then we torque them. 4.5 newton meters. There we go, 4.51. This side's done. Let's get our little Teflon ring from the inside. Just watch out for this guy, because like I said, he's super loose. He'll tighten up. He'll shrink up in there when we put him back in, when we put the whole shaft, when we combine the top with the bottom, basically. Just be careful with this guy. So we took the shaft out of the vise for now. We're going to grab our high-speed rebound and low-speed rebound. We're going to put it in, right? Slide it in. Now, oh, that one just happened to go in. If it doesn't go in fully, basically it needs to go in all the way here, the way you see it right there, right? If it doesn't just like sort of spin it around until uh, it falls into its seat, okay? That's what controls the knobs up here or the adjuster up there. So this guy is done. Now let's close them up. To close them up, we're gonna put them back into the soft jaw, 10 millimeter on the threads, put a little bit of Loctite red just one drop. There we go. Okay. Now, we're going to take this guy wide side down. All right. These threads facing up. We're going to take them, put them in there, thread them in by hand. Then we're going to take our 13 millimeter. 13 millimeter. Tie them down. Torque them down to 4.5 newton meters. Shaft turning on me. Odd position here, but right, we'll manage. There we are. Whoa, 4.6. It's okay. Not the end of the world. All right, now we put in the ball, the spring, and the screw, right? So first we take the ball, our de-dent ball. Be careful with them. Put them in a hole, stick them in, oops. Like I said, be careful with them. Put them in a the hole. There we go. Then we take our spring, put him in the hole, right? Then we're gonna take the screw. Put them on a two millimeter hex. Put just a little touch of Loctite blue. Boom. That's all we need. Just one little dab. We're going to put him in there. Screw him until he's flush first. All right. And basically, we want to test to make sure we get clicks. Yep. There we go. That clicks. Let's test the top one. Yep. That clicks. We are good. He is in there tight enough. Our rod is done. Let's put it all back together now. Now we want to connect them again, right? So very important. The letters and the hole, this a bleed hole, go on the bottom, right? So this is the compression side. This is the rebound side, or at least the low speed and, uh, re well, yeah, the rebound side, right? So. Make sure you position it the right way. Put it back into soft jaw. Tighten it down real good. Okay. Now, 
Loctite blue on the threads. All right, not too much. More than enough. Sink it into the threads. There we go. Now, make sure our glide ring is on there good. Okay, we're gonna take them. Make sure the glide ring goes in. Roll them in, there we go. There we go. Now we screw them down by fingers. Finger tight. I mean finger tight. Just throw them down with your hands first. Then we grab the 20 millimeter. Bring them all the way down. Plays at the end. Make sure he's on there good. Torque, cross foot, 90, deg uh, 90 degree angle. Always 90 degree angle. Should have mentioned that before. 16.9 newton meters. Make sure that it's not spinning. Seventeen, good enough. Now we are ready to put the top and bleed. Time for the bleed. We got the damper in the vise. Make sure that the bleed hole is facing you, okay? So there's a bleed hole right on top of the letters. Make sure it's facing you so you can see it. Very important for later. We're gonna take oil, we're gonna fill it about halfway up. So it's gonna be very hard for me to tell if I'm halfway up, to be honest, because I got so much around me. So much light, more than that. Make sure that the shaft is extended all the way down, by the way, right? So the bottom of the shaft's extended. That's gotta be at least halfway. Okay, so let's cycle the shaft a few times. The whole idea is to get air out from underneath. Okay. In fact, I'm going to put a little bit more oil in there. Cycle. Try to remove as much oil out of there as possible. I mean, air out of there as possible. Right. A little bit more oil in there. Cycle them again just to be 100% sure. We're near the top. Yep, there's definitely no air. I could actually see it through the bleed hole. There's definitely no air coming up. Okay, now one more thing we could do. Tap it, just in case there's air stuck on the side, let it all come out. All right, we are good. Now fill it up until you see a little bit of oil come out of the bleed hole. Nearly there. And oil's coming out of the bleed hole. So we filled it up with oil all the way to the bleed hole where it was coming out of the bleed hole a little bit, right? Now we got to clean our threads. Okay. Now, apply a little bit of Loctite on the threads. Loctite blue. There we go. Okay. Now, before we put in a compression stack, take the knobs, make sure you're in the fully open position all the way counterclockwise for both high speed. See if I go left, it clicks, go all the way to the counterclockwise as well as low speed. Make sure it's fully counterclockwise. There we go. Yeah. Fully counterclockwise. All right. Now take off 
Sorry about that. Now, what we're going to do, grab a piece of towel because this is probably going to get a little bit messy, is we're going to slowly put him in. Let's prep this guy too. We are going to slowly, in fact, we're going to take him, we're going to roll him in. Okay, roll him in. Oil's going to come out. That's the first seal that went in. Second seal's about to go in. Roll them in. Oops, watch out because like I said, he'll want to squirt out, right? So now we're just going to slowly put them in, slowly sink them. Oops, that was a little bit too quick. So slowly sink them as we're bleeding because we're bleeding them at the same time, right? So slowly sink them, slowly sink them, slowly sink them. This is much better in an area where you don't have to worry about making a mess. Put them in, there you go. Now, sink them down and try and thread him in. I got no, I didn't get him. There we go. Now I got him. Come on. There we go. All right. Spin around. We're still bleeding, we're still bleeding. Just do it slowly, we're still bleeding, we're still bleeding. It's gonna be a lot of spins. Okay, I just reached the end. Then we grab our torque wrench. 16.9 Newton meters. Boom, there we go. And we are blood. We're gonna now cycle the travel, about 75% of the travel, to get any unwanted oil out of there, right? So just push up. Watch out, because it actually might get stuck on you. Might squirt on you. So just push the damper up, bring it up. Oil's gonna come out. All right, 75% up, three quarters of the way up. So right there about, and that should be it. Now we're ready to put it back into the upper tube. Let's put it back in. So take it in, delicately put it through. And always by hand first, make sure you rotate it backwards until you feel a click and then rotate it forwards, just like that. Now we know we are in. Oh, he's all the way at the end. Torque wrench, 28 Newton meters. There you go, 28.4. Technically, it should be 28.2, so we are good. That is finished. Now we put our cap on. As for the cap, let's clean it all real well. Get any grit out of there. Both high and low speed. Watch out for the ball bearings. There's two of them, one on top and one of them on the side, right? So just make sure you keep track of those, make sure they don't fall out especially the one on the side. All right, so this way we get a nice smooth action. One. It's two, put this guy on there. Throw him on tap. And Two millimeter. Don't crank down on him. Finger tight. There we go. Test him. 
Yep. There we go. Yep. Click, click, click. Although I do hear grinding on this guy. Almost like there's dirt on there. But he definitely works. Damper done. Now let's take her home and finish up the lowers. Lower boot's been prepped, right? Now we put in the foam rings that we've been soaking. One, throw this guy in here. The other one, throw him in here. Okay. Make sure he is sitting properly, or they are sitting properly. This one seems like he's a little bit messed up, to be honest. Like, not shaped and right. He's like oblong. Anyway. So, next we put in our wipers. Take a thin layer of grease, put it on the outside. Ooh, too much grease. Don't put too much grease, just a thin, thin layer. One. Oops. Put it on the outside just like that. Okay. Then we take our tool. Put a wiper in there, make sure it's 36. Yes, 36. All right, we take them. Great. And give him a good whack. And make sure he is sitting flush. We need him to sit flush and he is not sitting flush. He needs a little bit more. Now he is sitting flush. So let's take this side. Uh, what's with this guy? That's so odd. He is sitting so weird. Okay, put him in. A good whack. He's sitting flush. And nearly flush, but not flush, just a little bit more, like literally half a millimeter. Now he's flush. Perfect. Awesome. Okay. Next up, let's wrap it all together. First, let's change out our sag ring, put a new one in, nice and fresh. This, uh, this O-ring do not grease. One of the very few O-rings you don't grease, okay? Next, what I do, I like putting these on after. I install the uppers into the lowers. Okay, so I just let these dangle out here just in case they get crushed by mistake, right? So now we're gonna take grease and it's concave. I like filling up that concave part fully. Some people think it's excessive. Well, it's been working for me for a long time. Okay, let's take strand butter, uh, scolium, whatever your preference is. Fill both of them. Be generous. I mean, don't be too wasteful, but be generous, right? Okay, so we have our damper side and our air side, right? We got our rings on there. We got a new sag ring on here. So now what we're gonna do, my hands so I don't get overly greasy. So we're gonna take them, pin them in right down the middle. Okay, try and get one side in just a little bit. Need a little guidance. There we go. And then the other side should follow suit. There we go. See it? Should be in. There we go. 
ones are already sticking out. All right, now we take the springs, put them on. Well, actually, buttons aren't fully in. There we go. Now the bottoms are through. Before we deal with that, let's fill them up and finish them up, and then we'll end with that. Let's prep our nuts. Let's take out the old crush washers, put in new crush washers. Sometimes crush washers can be such a pain. There we go. Let's put the new ones in there. Put them. The new ones in there, come on. Ah, oh, for crying out loud, there we go. All right, that takes care of that guy. Now, we have to fill this up with oil. We have our damper side, we have our air side. Our damper side needs 40 cc's of five weight. Our air side needs 10 cc's of 20 weight, right? So the first thing I need to do is bring this back out again so we have some room to put it in. Don't bring it all the way out, just bring it enough, bring it out enough where we could pour oil in there, right? So let me start with the uh, 10 cc's first and this is stickier. I don't wanna have to worry about it dripping out. So again, damper, air. That is way more than I need. There's 10 cc's, 10 cc's that line over there. That uh, seems about right. A little bit less. Okay. Yep, that's good. So we're gonna take our 10 cc's. We're gonna put in three air side. All right. This guy is done. Wipe off any excess. Then we're gonna take. Oh, is that gonna reach? Mm -hmm. Great. Watch me make a big mess now. Come on. Come on. Come on. There. I should cover it. Let's shrink it down. And we are at 40. Cool. I'm going to take the 40 and I'm going to put them in here. Done. Now. Pulls them up. There we go. All right. Of all things to happen, I just noticed that oil splashed on the lens uh, at some point, my guess is during the bleed. So uh, there's gonna be a few clips that aren't gonna be as clear, but from what I saw, they're still relatively clear. I'm not going back and removing wipers and doing a re-bleed in order to uh, get new footage. I think the footage is gonna be good enough. So from here on, well, that problem's fixed, okay? So let's continue. We put on, make sure that we have our new crush washers on our nuts. All right, screw these things on. By hand first, always by hand. Okay. Take a 50 millimeter for the damper side. 10 millimeter for the air spring side. And then torque wrench, 5.7 newton meters. All right.
5.71 on that one. And let's get this side. Come on, get in there. Get in there. Can't believe oil splashed on the lens. And 5.78 on that side. Good enough. All right. Now let's put on our rebound knobs. The rebound knob, the high speed compression, and this should be the low speed, right? I always mix those up to be honest. Um, you have a deeper side and you have a shallower side on this guy. The deeper side goes in towards the nut, all right? Then we have a wave washer, okay? Put a little bit of grease on the wave washer, just a little bit. My hands, I have enough grease for it, really, okay? And there's a screw. Now. On this rod, there's a flat side, so it's round with a flat side. The screw needs to sit on the flat side, okay? So make sure you align the flat side with the screw. And make sure that the wave washer is inside. So we are right there. All right. Take this guy, screw him down. There we go. And there you go. Should be able to click. Perfect. Outstanding. Now, let's put on our springs on the wipers. Make sure they go on all the way around. There we go. You will hear them snap. Take a good look to make sure that they did make it all the way around. Okay. Snap. There we go. All right. Let's put our rebound cap protector. All right, screw that one in there. Actually, you know what I forgot to do? I'll do it later. Make sure to adjust your knobs to whatever settings you had written down in the beginning, okay? And then we fill it up with air. As for air, I'm only gonna put 50 PSI in there for now. I will set it all up later. Just put 50 PSI, cycle it. In other words, compress it up and down a few times and then install the rest or add the rest of the air needed based off whatever measurements you took below, right? But we always wanna cycle a shock or a fork with 50 P every 50 PSI in order to equalize the lower with the upper chambers. All right. Ultimately, we put our cap. Ding, 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 ding. Now let's give them a good spray down. All right, clean off all external oil so oil doesn't get stuck on it when you go for your first ride. All right, clean it all nice and well. Get all oil off this thing. Now, one thing I will say, for your first few rides, there will be Grease coming out of the, uh, the wipers onto the sanctions out here. Wipe it off for the first, you know, it's going to take probably three, maybe four rides before it completely goes away. Well, mostly goes away. All right. So just be careful on that one because you don't want dirt to attract onto your sanctions and to, you know, uh, get into the wipers. So just make sure you keep track of that. Ta-da! We are done. We just fully serviced a Fox Factory 36 Grip 2 fork. Not a hard job, guys. I am positive you guys could do it, okay? The lowers, everybody should be able to do without any issues. Uh, do this regularly. Every 50 hours or so, give or take, where you ride, how you ride, so on and so forth. You will not regret it. It's amazing how well forks and shocks work when they get their regular 50-hour services, right? The air spring, easy enough. Really very easy to do any air spring these days. All right, the damper on this guy is not all that bad. Reality is the top part, yeah, I question if you really have to do it all the time. Uh, the bottom part, you absolutely have to change the U-cup seal on the rebound head, basically, uh, because that thing wears and you'll get flopped. That's definitely something that has to get changed. I mean, according to Fox, every 125 hours. So um, it, learning this, once you get used to it, you'll be able to do it in no time flat. Uh, it'll take you literally less than an hour, the whole job. And uh, you'll be good and ultimately you'll save yourself the better part of a hundred bucks because you gotta figure that it's gonna cost you close to 200 bucks. 
to send it to Fox, right? With shipping and everything. And uh, get the seals kit for the seal kits for this, get them on special. You can save some pretty good money, plus the oils. And the oils will last you for your for a few service jobs, right? So, guys, please, if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. Uh, it's amazing how much a uh, thumbs up actually helps with the YouTube algorithm to get the videos out there. Again, it's always great to see people around the world uh, comment as far as asking questions so uh, others could help them out so they could have a better experience overall in mountain biking, right? Which is the ultimate goal over here. Click the subscribe button. Click the bell button, what ding, in order to get notified when a video gets launched. All right, until then, hope all is well with everyone, and we will be talking to you soon. Have a good one. Take care. Bye.